let's make the complex simple. And let me share with you a framework for all speaking. Whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, small group, large group, in-person, digital, formal, informal, the framework applies. All speaking has two distinct parts, what I call creating the talk and performing the talk. Creating refers to everything you do before you open your mouth. Performing refers to the things you do as you are speaking. And note that I say performing, not delivering. Delivery is too easy. Deliver a letter, deliver a package. Any good talk is really a performance. So it doesn't matter the situation. We do some things before we ever speak, and then we do other things as we are speaking. Two very separate skill sets, but we need to master both of them. Let me develop the framework a little bit more. Before you open your mouth, you have to create the talk. And that involves paying attention to these things, audience, content, organization, looks, and maybe visual aids. Let me say a little more about it. Audience, it starts there. The biggest mistake speakers make is they think it's about them, their topic. It isn't. You must design a talk for a specific audience. Who are they? What do they know? What do they need to know? What are they capable of knowing? What mood are they in? What device will they be using to access the talk? Speakers tend not to spend enough time analyzing the audience, but every talk starts there. Content. Yes, before we open our mouths, we have to put in the content, and generally that's required information. There are certain things you have to say, but if you only had required information, that wouldn't be sufficient. I'll talk more about that in another video. Organization. Before you open your mouth, you organize the words you're going to say. Now you know the basic speech plan. Tell us what you're going to say. Say it. Tell us what you said. And that's a cliche, but it works. That's a beginning, middle, and an end. We can do more. But before you open your mouth, you organize your thoughts. Looks. Before you open your mouth, you design your appearance. You create an impression. And you need to convey the appropriate image. That's part of audience analysis, isn't it? What would be the right way to dress for this situation? And finally, visual aids. You may not have them. They're not part of every talk. But if you have them, you create them, obviously, before you ever say a word. Then you need to make sure they're relevant. So that's what's true before you open your mouth. If you think about the audience and design a presentation specifically for them, if you put in just the right content and the right amount of content, if you organize it well, if you look the way you're supposed to look, and if you have visual aids that are powerful and compelling, that's it. You're ready to speak or to hit record. Now, this is the part that mostly trips people up. When you talk about the fear of public speaking, People aren't afraid to create a talk generally. They're afraid of performing. And there are so many books and so many people out there who are muddying the waters, telling you what you have to do. Articulation, enunciation, elocution, vocal modulation, intonation, inflection, stand still, use humor, speak loudly, speak clearly, speak slowly. A lot of bad advice and a lot of confusing advice. Let me give you a framework that makes it simple. As you are speaking, you need to pay attention to poise, voice, life, eye contact, gestures, and speed. Let me develop these a little bit. Poise. You need to appear calm and confident. You may not be, but you need to appear calm and confident. That means you control shuffling, rocking, fidgeting, odd ticks. It starts there. You've created this great talk, but if you're distracting us with some odd behavior, You've lost us. Voice. This encompasses a lot. Articulation, elocution, projection, volume. All I need is every word heard. That's it. By the way, you don't have to speak loudly. My father was very effective when he said, Eric, come here. But I need to hear every word. 
life. This is the biggest growth area for all speakers. You need to have life, feeling, emotion, passion. People say you should be enthusiastic, but not always. Some situations don't call for enthusiasm. Some situations call for something quite different. But in all situations, you need to have life. It is the biggest growth area for all speakers. Overwhelmingly, the number one thing people say is that speaker was boring. Life. Eye contact. Yes, any talk is a conversation magnified. When you speak to somebody, you look at them. When you talk in any situation, you need to make eye contact. Gestures. How do you move your hands, your face, your body? All of those motions count and they contribute to a good talk. And finally, speed. You should have a well-paced talk, a well-paced presentation. Now, this is what's true. As you are speaking, if you are poised, if you have a voice such that you can hear every word, if you have life in your voice, if you make eye contact, if you gesture well, if you use speed well, you are a great speaker. That's it. That's the framework. You can put this framework on any speaker. It's what we do in every situation. The evangelist that has people laughing one minute and crying five minutes later, how did he pull that off? He really used this framework. The person at the comedy club that has people laughing until their side split, how did she pull that off? Well, she used this framework. You can put this on any speaker. And by the way, you'll use it yourself in any situation. I used it when I gave my daughter car keys for the first time when she turned 16. What's going on in the head of a 16 year old girl? Exactly what do I want to say about driving? What am I going to say first? What am I going to say second? How should I look? I wasn't mowing the lawn on Saturday, Dad. I was, this is a serious talk, Dad. I didn't have visual aids. Did I perform it? Yeah. Did she hear every word? Did I have life in my voice? Because this is serious. Did I make eye contact? Did I gesture? Did I use speed well? I think so. This is the framework for all speaking. And you need to use it every time you're involved in any oral communication situation. So what you have then is a framework, kind of like a blueprint. But as you know, having a blueprint is not the same as having a house. If you'd like to know how to add to that framework and become an engaging, confident, competent speaker in all situations, I recommend this book.